Hi, I'm Belinda Carley and today I'm going to show you how to formulate natural, vegan, halal, palm-free personal care. Yes, this was tough. Okay, so let's take a look at what I've just talked about. The very first thing was vegan. So when we're saying we want to formulate a vegan product, we are therefore avoiding any animal byproduct. We're avoiding animal products and animal byproduct. We also can't use things like honey. We can't use beeswax. We can't use lanolin. And we can't use a lot of hydrolyzed proteins that came from silk or wool. Now, if I was going to formulate a product using synthetic materials, I can still use all sorts of mineral oils, silicons, ethoxylated materials. I have still got heaps of choice. But the consumer who's looking for a vegan product is generally also looking for it to be quite natural. And as soon as I start going to natural materials, I start to reduce my available choices. Okay, so I could make you a vegan cosmetic pretty easily. That wasn't the tough one. Then if we look at halal. Now, halal and vegan cosmetics can, in most cases, be produced to achieve both principles. With halal, we'd need to avoid animal products. We definitely need to avoid pork. But if we're making a vegan product, we would be achieving that anyway. With a halal product, we also need to avoid any alcohol. Now, there is a lot of confusion about materials in personal care products that have alcohol in the inky name. I'm going to use cetyryl alcohol as the very first example because this is also very commonly used throughout a lot of personal care. When you are formulating to be halal, you need to avoid ethanol, as in the alcohol that can be drunk. Now, cetyryl alcohol, by comparison, is a fatty alcohol. It's not the same thing. It's called cetyryl alcohol because it has an OH group on the end of the hydrocarbon chain. To a chemist, this OH group is an alcohol functional group, but it is nothing like ethanol, which is the alcohol that gets consumed. Ethanol also has that alcohol functional group, but it's commonly referred to as alcohol, and that's where the confusion comes in when you've got a product whose inky name is satirical alcohol. A lot of consumers, if they're just reading an ingredients list, think they're somehow the same thing. So just so you understand they're not, uh, chemists use this word alcohol to talk about an OH group on the end of what may be, in satirical alcohol's case, a hydrocarbon chain. So it's a fatty alcohol. It's nothing like ethanol. Interestingly, glycerin also has alcohol functional groups, yet its inky name doesn't refer to that at all. So again, if I was creating you a halal compliant product, I could use a lot of synthetic materials. But with halal, again, a lot of consumers think it's really clean green living. So they tend to want more natural ingredients. Again, not the biggest problem or challenge for me as a chemist. I could still formulate a halal or vegan product relatively easily. So I thought I'd add in an extra challenge to this video and make it palm free as well. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because you can get uh, some vegan people in particular who are advocates of palm free living. Can I just take a moment to tell you exactly how hard that is? Number one for personal care, you would be amazed how many palm oil derivatives are hidden in your products and you're not aware of them. Now, we don't do this to be sneaky. We use palm oil because it has short chain fatty acids in it, which we can then convert into all sorts of emulsifiers, esters, surfactants. They are really handy materials for us. We can also do the same with coconut oil, again, very short fatty acids present in the triglyceride chain, which means we can manipulate them into all sorts of raw materials in personal care. You're probably eating more palm than you are using on your skin. So just so you can get the full background of just how much palm oil you probably are exposing yourself to without even realizing it, please visit the World Wildlife Fund website. Now you can also get RSPO or mass balance palm. Now this is palm oil that has been obtained using mostly sustainable or all sustainable measures 
and to be an RSPO or mass balance supplier, you actually need to get your whole processes certified. But I'm going to leave RSPO and mass balance out of this product today just to show you, yes, palm free can be done. It's also going to be vegan and halal, but it was very, very difficult to do so. I'm going to start by showing you a cream product today. Now this was actually quite creamy, quite buttery, as you can see, very high viscosity. It was actually really hard for me to achieve this. So this is the one I'm gonna show you in the video. One of my previous attempts was more of a lotion consistency. So I'm gonna put that formula uh, into the free formulation sheet as well just email us we're happy to provide you with the full details of the materials we used because trust me they're harder to find than you think so now let me show you how it's done okay first of all we're starting with water which obviously is water it is perfectly fine to use now normally you see me create a slurry using glycerin i'm not doing that today because guess where glycerin comes from yes it is a material that comes from palm and a lot of people aren't aware of that so I am putting my xanthan gum into propane diol. Now propane diol is a humectant and it comes from corn. So we are palm free already. I'm making my slurry as normal. Always use a slurry method with natural gums. And then I'm going to just add this to the water to create my first gel base. I'm going to start this heating and here I have my emulsifiers. So I have Montanov 202 here by Sepik. It is one of the few emulsifiers, non-ionic emulsifier blends that is palm free. Ceteral alcohol, glycerol stearate, stearic acid, you name it, just about all of them contain a palm oil derivative or their RSPO or their mass balance. The Montanov 202 is completely palm free. I also have a glycerol stearate citrate in here. It's my anionic emulsifier. It helps bring body and viscosity to this cream so that I have a nice thick viscous cream product for you. Uh, you need to specifically source palm free glycerol stearate citrate. Otherwise you would be using one that potentially comes from a palm source. So you must check documentation and are specifically for palm free. I have some shea butter here and this is just so that we get a nice emolliency to the product. And then here I have my liquid lipids. So in here I have jojoba esters. So again, getting our palm free esters is hard. And of course, if you just use vegetable oils, it could end up feeling quite heavy on the skin. I also have some apricot kernel oil in there as well and that's just to get a nice skin feel so now i need to heat both phases and then i combine my emulsion now when using these materials you do need to use high shear so i'm going to be using my homogenizer in a moment uh, this is a product where you do need extremely high shear to get a good emulsion to form so pull out the stick blender if you don't have a proper homogenizer While these phases are heating, let me just tell you how hard it is to find emulsifiers, surfactants, and other materials where they do not contain or possibly contain any sort of palm. Again, you can go for RSPO or mass balance if that's okay with your consumer and your company philosophy. And if you do that, you open up your library of choice significantly. This video today is all about making sure it was vegan, halal, and totally palm free, just to set out the challenge and give you some solutions. The other thing I should mention here is that cooling your product halal is not usually enough. If you are going to the extent of creating a halal formula, then you should be looking at getting your formula and product certified which also means you need to make sure it's manufactured with a halal certified manufacturer. If you're going to be creating vegan, halal or palm free, you'd better love documentation and double checking every single input. You are ultimately responsible for the claims the product 
brings out to the market. So you need to check the paperwork extremely carefully to make sure your product truly is what you say it is. And again, if you wanna be halal, then you really should take the extra step and become certified. As you can see, we formed a nice, beautiful emulsion. Next, we need it to cool below 40. We add our preservative. We can add our extracts and actives. Now again, be very careful because a lot of your extracts will come in glycerin and that glycerin may contain palm. In this case, I've used Liftonin Expert, which is a glycerin-free extract. It's also a fantastic active and it has a wonderful collagen story. Now again, we can't just add collagen to a vegan product because a lot of the collagen sources are from animals. You'd need to check it very carefully. There are only a very few materials currently available that are vegan friendly sources of collagen, but then check them carefully because they may contain palm. I've used this particular active because of his smart collagen management. It actually helps your body with its own uh, stimulus of collagen without also causing excess degradation from stimulating that process, which can otherwise happen. Now, finally, I'm adding some antioxidant. And in this case, I'm using uh, a rosemary antioxidant, which is quite resinous and does turn the product a little bit of that beigey color that you will soon see. And this is largely unavoidable from this rosemary antioxidant, but it's also really good antioxidant protection. Now, of course, you can use all sorts of essential oils uh, for your aroma, but you need that antioxidant protection when any, whenever you're using vegetable oils. The jojoba esters, was a material I chose specifically because it has a really light skin feel. It is of course vegan friendly and palm free and being jojoba esters, it will not oxidize. So I help reduce any oxidative risk there. Now we need to check and adjust the pH. And there you have your vegan friendly, halal suitable, palm free cream. Now don't forget on the day you make it, it is still quite low viscosity. It will set overnight to this buttery consistency. As you can see, quite a high viscosity there. And of course, contact us for the free formula and you'll also get the lotion version as well. Well, there you go. That is how you make vegan friendly, halal suitable, palm free cosmetic creams. It was a tough challenge to achieve all three. Let me just run you some of the important parts of complying with all of these three major claims. So of course we looked at vegan friendly first. So that's absolutely no animal products. Uh, again, be wary of honey, be careful of any beeswax, uh, any carmine red colorants. Uh, also be careful of any hydrolyzed proteins from silk or sheep's wool sources and also be careful of any lanolin. Then of course we looked at halal which again if you are following vegan rules you're almost there. Just also be careful to make sure that your product doesn't contain any ethanol and remember that a fatty alcohol like satiral alcohol is perfectly acceptable. It is not the same as drinking alcohol. You also need to be careful of using any dead sea salt. That's also not allowed in a halal product. And if you are going to be formulating halal, then you really should be looking at getting it certified to prove that it is halal. And that does mean getting your product manufactured at a halal certified manufacturer. Finally, the really tough one, palm free. So remember, you can visit the World Wildlife Organization to find out more about why consumers have issues with palm. And of course, you're probably eating more of it than you realize 
not to mention in your personal care. Palm oil and its derivatives get used because of its very convenient hydrocarbon chain and it is widespread in all sorts of surfactants and emulsifiers, even glycerin. So you need to be really careful if you're trying to avoid palm, you're probably using far more than you think you are. So if that is important to you, please visit the World Wildlife Organization website for more information about that. You can of course get RSPO and mass balance palm versions, it depends on your organizational philosophy and how far you wanna go. The examples I made today, again, are totally palm free. But be careful of all your fatty acids, your fatty alcohols, your surfactants, even be careful of glycerin in your extracts, glycerin in your preservatives, and there's a whole host of other places where palm might be hiding. So if you don't like paperwork, then trying to formulate vegan friendly, halal compliant, or palm free is not for you because you need to check and recheck the paperwork and probably also hassle your suppliers a little to find out for sure that you are complying with your organizational philosophies. Remember the responsibility for the claims you make about your formulation come back to you. So make sure if you're making those claims, you have formulated them carefully and checked them even more carefully. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope I've given you some solutions. Please give us a thumbs up and leave any comments or questions below. Remember to visit the World Wildlife Organization if you have questions about palm. They really are the best ones to comment on that situation. Please let us know what you might want to see more videos on. This was actually because I get asked about these three things quite a lot. So I thought I'd combine them into one video to give you a one video solution to some of these formulating problems. Make sure you subscribe to find out about all our videos. Happy formulating.